Hi guys, in this video I'm gonna present you with the functionalities and workflow of FilmMatch, my film emulation power grade. The power grade has been developed for over a year profiling a true film stock, the Kodak 50D. And since the journey of film profiling never really ends, I recently updated it to make it even more accurate. It's super easy to use and it delivers very organic results. I've been using it on every single project ever since I created it and it renders amazing skin tones and all the film-like characteristics that we love. And now, let's jump into DaVinci Resolve to show you. Here we are in DaVinci Resolve, we got uh, footage from uh, different cameras, we have uh, Ari Alexa, we got Blackmagic 6K, uh, Sony FS700 and uh, Blackmagic 4K footage. Um, each clip has been duplicated, so we have uh, uh, one version of the clip uh, going through a uh, proper Rex and Rank conversion with the Ari Alexa LUT, and um, this for every clip. And uh, the clips that are not Ari Alexa have been, uh, for example, the Ari uh, RAW files have been debayered into Ari White Gamut 3, Ari Log C, and then we have the uh, Ari LUT conversion LUT applied. Uh, while for the clips from Sony, we have a color space transform that goes from uh, Sony S Gamut 3 dot Cine S Log 3 to Ari White Gamut 3 Ari Log C, and then we have the Ari LUT applied. Okay, so um, we're gonna take a look at what uh, the film emulation does and compare it to the standard Rec 709 conversion. So uh, let's apply the power grade first on uh, our Isabella and uh, the color chart to see what it does. Okay, and this is what the power grade does straight out of the box. We have the Rec 709 and this is the film match power grade. These are all the nodes that uh, give life to the emulation. And here is where the core transformation of the power grade happens. Basically, I profiled the Kodak 50D film negative by matching color charts uh, shot on both uh, Ari and uh, Kodak 50D, uh, utilizing custom tools like uh, CTLs like uh, Tetra and, and various uh, custom DCTLs in order to match the contrast and the color rendition. And this is the core uh, transformation happening uh, in the power grade. And uh, we have uh, three different versions of basically the same LUT. We have a base vibrance one, uh, a vibrant one, which is the one uh, which uh, is selected as a default, and then uh, uh, the very vibrant version of the LUT, which is my favorite. Okay, let's just select the very vibrant one and compare it to the Rec 709 version. And you can see that the colors are very saturated, but in a very filmic way without uh, ever getting garish. And just for the sake of it, let's try to go to the Rec 709 version of the image and uh, try to achieve a uh, similar level of uh, saturation and uh, skin tone complexity by using the saturation slider. And um, let's see if we can get there somehow. If we toggle between the two, I mean, the image is saturated, but uh, some of the colors are getting overly saturated and the skin tones are not nearly as complex as the film emulation one. Okay, so let's jump to this other image. Uh, this is an image from uh, Ari Alexa. This is the log state of the image. This is the Rec 709. And uh, let's now apply the power grade to the log version. And uh, this is what it does straight out of the box. Rec 709, film match power grade. And uh, let's select the um, very vibrant version of the LUT because it's the one that I like the most for most cases. And uh, let's compare the two images with film match applied straight out of the box without doing anything to the image. Rec 709, film match. Now I want to talk about what's happening in nodes number five, six, and seven. Basically, note number five uses a, a color space transform to go from log to linear. 
like so. And node number seven uses the same color space transform to go from linear to log again. So in fact, if we uh, disable and enable these two nodes, nothing is happening. But here we are in a different uh, gamma. We are no longer in log C, but we are in linear. And this allows us to manipulate the color balance and uh, the exposure of the image very organically, as if we were manipulating the image directly in camera. Uh, this is accomplished uh, with the gain wheel. This is the only tool that you should use in this node to balance the image, not the offset wheel as you would normally do, but the gain wheel, because this is how um, the math works uh, in linear light and uh, let's say that we want to add a little bit of warmth to the image like so and uh, maybe increase the exposure a little bit and uh, let's go full screen and uh, before and after this uh, slight adjustment and it works very very organically and that's because it's been uh, the image has been processed like this in linear. Uh, let's toggle between the Rexon version of the image and uh, the film emulation, and it really brings the image to life, specifically in the skin tones that are way more vibrant and uh, true to life, I would say. Rex 9 film match. This has nothing to do with color grading itself. This is just a core transformation that every image in a given project should go through if you want to achieve the film look and then you should color grade on top of this main transformation but this is not color grading this is like this is a look this is a look that should be applied to every single clip of a uh, given project so um let's go now to some um black magic uh 6k footage here we have the Ari Alexa LUT applied let's now apply the power grade from film match and as you can see uh, as you could see in the uh, Rex and Rain version as well the image is slightly underexposed so in the Rex and Rain version we go into the raw tab and we raise it a little bit but what we're gonna do in the power grade uh, is not uh, tweaking uh, the exposure from the raw tab, which we could do, but just for the sake of demonstration, we're gonna balance it in linear light, which is gonna give you, which is gonna give us very accurate results. As if we were exposing brighter directly on set. And if we toggle between the two, Rex 109, film match, maybe it's still slightly darker. Let's raise it a little bit. So we have Rex 709, fill match. Let's now go to some clips shot on the Sony FS700. Here we have the Rex 709 version of the image and uh, let's now apply the fill match power grade. And uh, this time we got to use the color space transform, which is the first node of the power grade because this is not RELX footage. So we got to transform it into RELX footage. And uh, this was shot on Sony. So it is Sony S Gamut 3 dot Cine S log 3. And this is how the emulation should look. Let's just switch to the very vibrant version because I love it as you can tell by now and I want to show you one tool that is uh, disabled as a default but which is really really nice which is the highlight compression so let's enable it and uh, to make it clear what it does let's um, bring up the key output of the node and as you can see it compresses the highlights in a very filmic way. You can see. One other note that I like to use, uh, especially in combination with the vibrant version of the LUT, is the high-low DSAT uh, note 
basically it desaturates the highlights and the shadows a bit just a little bit in order to clean them up and uh, this is before and after it's very subtle but uh, i think it goes uh, a long way in certain situations and uh, let's compare the skin tones uh, of the rec 709 version to the film emulation version i mean the difference here as well is night and day i would say rec 709 film emulation okay so let's move on and now i want to show you something uh very nice about film match uh in regards to overly saturated colors okay so here we have this clip uh shot on the sony fs 700 which is clearly overexposed so we're gonna bring down the signal a bit oops okay to about here i would say yeah okay nice maybe too much okay um as you can see the colors are very very saturated and uh the little girl's jacket basically punches you in the eye and uh i want to show you how film match handles over saturated colors like over saturation in uh general so let's uh apply the power grade Clearly overexposed. Let's enable the color space transform. And uh, okay, so then let's balance the exposure in this node as I taught you before. Let's bring it down a bit. And uh, even if we apply the most vibrant version of the LUT, which maybe I wouldn't do here because the image is very, very vibrant already. See how the film emulation compresses the overly saturated colors and, uh, and the little girl's jacket doesn't punch you in the eye anymore. And also the reds in the background are very, very dense and nice. Oops. Before, after, before and after and also the skin tones are very very nice without even touching anything in regards to color grading it just adjusted the exposure just just keep in mind this let's now go to uh this clip which is uh black magic 4k and uh i want to show you uh the halation model that i use in uh in the power grade Okay, so we apply the power grade. This has already been the Bayard uh, to RE YD Gamma 3 RE Log C, so we don't need the color, the color space transform. And uh, let's take a look at the halation. Okay, as you can see, the halation would appear at the uh, contrast edges. So right here, you can see if I turn it on and off, it's a very slight effect because I like it like this. So this is how it's been set up, but if you want a more dramatic effect because you like it, then you can increase the selection in this node number three inside the compound node by making the selection, the selection slightly wider. And you can see that uh, the elation starts to be way more apparent. In fact, if we disable it, enable it, you can clearly see elation effect which is very very nice okay let's now jump to the first image that we started the presentation with so i can show you what the first uh nodes do node number two three and four uh, the second node mimics the modulation transfer function of film which is a fancy term but basically what happens uh in film is that the finest details in the image are slightly blurred and this gives uh, this renders uh, very nicely the skin tones and uh, it covers up a little bit of the imperfection of the skin tones and probably this characteristic of film is not there by chance but it's uh, there by design because 
probably the color scientist at Kodak and Fuji uh, discovered that if you blur the finest details uh, a little bit, then uh, the image looks better to our eyes and the skin tones look better. So I'll show you what this node does. Again, this node blurs only the finest details, not the whole image. So you don't lose definition, but you only lose a little bit of clarity uh, in those uh, finest details, which is something that you would want if you want to achieve uh, a nice film aesthetic. So let's uh, switch the node on and off to see what it does. This is off. This is on. You can see a slight change. It's very subtle. So let's increase. I don't know if you can see it over YouTube, but let's increase the key output to 0.7 to make it very clear. This is a, a look that's more similar to what 16 millimeter film would do if you increase it to 0.7 uh, as it blurs the finest details a little bit more. Okay, you can clearly see it now. Let's move the arrow. This is, this is more similar to what 16 millimeters film would do. 30, 35 is way more subtle in those regards but I really like it and really sells the look very nicely. So let's, um, let's now take a look at nodes number uh, three and four. Let's start with uh, node number four, uh, which is the uh, gate weave characteristic of film. Basically film, whenever it gets recorded and uh, scanned or projected, it moves constantly. And the gate weave uh, uses the camera shake plugin uh, to accomplish uh, this ongoing movement of film uh, so let's uh, first this is a still image and I chose a, a still image to show you uh, what the gate weave note does because it makes it more clear uh, so if we play if we zoom in and play the normal still image obviously nothing is happening because it's a still image uh -huh. uh, but if we play same still image with the let's disable the flicker for now uh with the gate weave on uh you can see let's zoom in even more and maybe let's take a look at this let's take a look at this edge here you can see that the image moves uh slightly apart from the grain okay let's add the flicker node which is uh, normally set to 0.5 and you should leave it at that because otherwise it gets too um, noticeable, uh, which you don't want to. But um, I'll, I don't know if you're going to be able to clearly see it, but uh, the flicker basically is a constant um, change in uh, contrast and exposure. Very subtle, but constant. Um, and uh, if we play the still, I think you can see it over here. Okay, so then uh, I really love these three nodes because uh, it was something that was uh, lacking in my film emulation before and ever since I added them, it really sells uh, the look apart from the contrast and color rendition of film. Uh, it's very important to replicate these film characteristics in order to be able to sell the look if you want to go for a full-on film emulation and, and if you don't like it because it looks too vintagey then you can just disable it so i talked about uh, all the uh, nodes in the film emulation apart from the grain and print node basically uh, in the print node uh, you have uh, you have a film print emulation lut um, it normally i normally use the kodak 2383 d65 this is my favorites and uh, is selected as a default, but you can use any of the uh, film looks that come with uh, DaVinci Resolve to uh, substitute this last node. Let's, for example, change it to uh, Fujifilm. Okay, so before and after. This is the Kodak. This is the Fuji. Okay, let's go back to Kodak. Um, and then you have the grain node which utilizes the film grain effects from uh, Resolve, which with uh, Resolve 18 has been greatly improved because finally you can control not only the shadows, midtones, and highlights, but you can also control the red, green, and blue channels of the film grain, which is uh, uh, very nice because in real film, the grain that is organically generated by 
the emulsion as different intensities on uh, each uh, channel. So that's very, very handy to have it here. Wouldn't change any of the advanced controls if you wanna uh, play with the uh, grain node. I, won't, I would only change the opacity, whether you wanna increase or decrease the grain effect and uh, the grain size if you want to maybe mimic 16 millimeters or even eight millimeters, you would increase the grain size. Let's, let's maybe take a look. I don't know how it looks. Maybe let's increase the opacity a little bit. And yeah, this definitely looks like a 16 millimeters. So I gave you an overview of the whole simulation power grade that I created over the course uh, of a year of uh, research and study. Uh, if you're interested, you can find it at uh, film-match.com. I will leave you a link below in the description and uh, I'll see you next time.